Hello and welcome. Let's model a quick return mechanism. In this fast-paced tutorial, we'll be using Autodesk and Wonder 2024 to understand the core principles of the quick return mechanism, master essential assembly tools in Inventor. We will start in an assembly file and model the parts dependent on each other. We will design, assemble and animate our own mechanism in minutes, not hours. Before we start building, let's take a quick moment to understand how a quick return mechanism works. Essentially, it uses a combination of levers and cams to achieve rapid movement in one direction and a slower controlled movement in the other. This allows for efficient operation and precise control. Now let's start designing. I created an empty assembly file called the QRM and start by creating my first component within this environment. I'll call that stand and pick my template here. This will be a metric standard millimeter template. And start a new sketch on the front plane with a two point rectangle, um, a center point rectangle, and give that dimensions of 122 and 12. Okay. Then I'll take the next rectangle here, place that like this, arrange those midpoints aligned to each other, give that rectangle a height of 166, a width of 16 and take that two point rectangle place one over here give that an 18 by four millimeter dimension place that 12 millimeter line here continue with another two-point rectangle here give that 12 millimeters by six and a vertical dimension of 72 then here at the top I'll draw one line to mention that um, offset here with uh, 24 and continue sketching with the line tool from here there at an angle going back make that a construction line Go to the mirror, pick those two, mirror those over that line, and to mention that here with uh, 14, oops, I wanted that at an angle, okay, so give it an angle of 18 degrees and that line from here with the 12 millimeters and again a line to that midpoint and we'll get a fully constrained sketch I'll exit that and go into the extrude command take that 
region down there, make that a symmetric um, direction with the 122 um, dimension. Continue with that region here and give that a 22 dimension. And finally, take this one over there with a 222 dimension. Okay. I prefer that visual style shaded with edges. And I'll make that um, visible again, that sketch. And go into the revolve. And take um, that region. Revolve that around that axis. And that one around this one. Right. I'll hide that sketch again. And there we have our first component. Maybe we want to just, um, for looks, give a little chamfer here with the two millimeters to uh, um, those lines here. All right. That's our first component. Now, um, I was in the part environment, and I'll return to our assembly environment. Next, I want to model that sliding dovetail here in this slot. So I go to create, call that part dovetail. Again, pick my metric standard millimeter template. Okay, that. And um, pick that XY plane here. That's what I want to draw. And start that sketch on that plane. This will be up here. I'll draw here and then a symmetric type of view. I'll start by projecting geometry. That face. All right, there it appears. And I will take that edge as well here. Then again, I will take that two point center rectangle. Place that somewhere here first. Um, get a little closer. Make a coincident um, constraint. Then uh, horizontal here. And then uh, vertical to that bottom line there. And just one dimension is missing, the height of that. And I'll give that... 16. Okay, fully constrained sketch. I'll exit that, go into the extrude, take that region, take that one, make that a symmetric direction of uh, 22. I'll okay that. And then let's start one more sketch on this um, face here. That'll be a circle, eight millimeter. Again, I will project um, that face and create um, horizontal relationship and a vertical, everything's um, fully constrained. And now let's um, go to the extrude of that circle and define that by um, the geometry of our 
um, stand and take that face. All right, there it is. And I will change the appearance of that to red. Yeah. And again, return to our um, main assembly or our assembly. So I'll create my third component, name that disk. Again, the metric motor template and place it on, on this face. All right. And start my sketch right there by projecting that circle and drawing one more with that origin and 82 millimeter diameter. Exit that sketch, go into the extrude, take that, turn that around, give that a six millimeter distance. Okay that, and Start a new sketch on that face with a circle of eight millimeters and a distance from the origin of uh, 32. And that's it. Um, well, um, one dimension will align that vertically over our origin. All right, Ex exit that sketch, go into the extrude, and again, define the, the distance with this face this time. Okay, there it is. I will change the appearance of that one with a smooth, dark, forest green appearance and return to our main assembly. And now we will define the last component, the crank. So let's create that component, name it uh, crank. Um, standard millimeters. Okay. And place that on this face. Start a sketch on that plane and project now this circle, this circle, that one, and the top one, all right? Then find that um, slot command here. Take that center point slot, place that center here, go up there, make that that eight millimeter um, dimension, and then take that Center to center slot tool. Take that one over here. So it goes somewhere over here. Give that a 22 millimeter dimension. And I mentioned that um, center line with <clears throat> 172 millimeters. Okay, and do that one more time. From that center here to here, and again, it's eight millimeters. Great. That's it for that sketch. Go into the extrude. Now take this region and fine tune that a little. Now take that one and take that one. Let's have a look. Go in the 
other direction and give that a six millimeter distance. Okay, then. And again, I'll change the appearance of that to laked satin blue and return to our main assembly. Now let's um, think about how we went about this. Um, we attached that dovetail to that plane, which goes here right through the middle, and that created that flush um, relationship, and we don't want that anymore because we want this to, to slide, right? Then um, we attached that crank to those positions and let's just make that independent and that is by suppressing the, this adaptive um, mode and that makes our crank independent. Now let's have a look at the disc. Oops, I didn't want to. Um, this um, rotates, but for our animation, I will create a joint, and that's a rotational joint between this component. I'll just pick that edge of that disc and take that one. And it gives us a simulation of how this is going to go, and that's fine with me. And now let's apply um, now the corresponding constraints we need for our crank. So I'll take that um, tool. I'm here in the axis alignment option and I take this axis and that one. I apply that and then here you can see that that needs to be positioned in that slot, that pin. So I'll go to tangent and Take that cylindrical face here and take that one and apply that. And we'll do the same thing up here between that face and the one. I'll exit that. And now we can animate our mechanism by going to our rotational joint, go to drive, and I will give it a start angle of zero and an end angle 360 times 10. Well, just to uh, make it turn 10 times and go to the play button. And there is our quick return mechanism assembled, animated, and ready. Well, I hope you like this tutorial, and I see you in the next one.